That ugly money. That ugly money. Yeah. Say it's that ugly money. This is the Ugly Money Podcast. It's about the process of success. Everything between your first dollar and your first million. That's ugly money. money. <laughs> Podcast brought to you by Touchable Shea. All natural, organic, natural skincare products. Man, they got the body butters, they got the oils, they got the deodorant, anything you need vegan for your body, man. So, you know what I'm saying? When you go to Touchable Shea, get you right, you're going to have your elbows not ashy, you're going to have your knuckles looking pristine. Touchable Shea, official podcast sponsor of the Ugly Money Podcast. Today, I have a very special guest. Yes, indeed, ladies and gentlemen. We got some onion for the fun, yon. <laughs> a consumer law expert, dedicated father, a dynamic public speaker, and an educator to millions. He has the Credit Summit 2023 coming, or 2024, no, 2023 coming up September 29th through October 1st. Make sure you tap into that. Ladies and gentlemen, Durain Delavante is here. <laughs> I try to get like the best interviews and in I mean like the best intros that in the world. That intro was very nice. I'm trying to I'm trying to like you know D- DJ Envy be thinking he got me, but I think <laughs> I got him. I think I got him coming, bro. That one was good. That was good. I appreciate that you, man. That was good. So let's start from the beginning. Talk to me, bro. Who was Durain before Durain became the Durain we know? All right. So my name is Durain Delavante. For those of you who don't know. I'm a consumer law expert, right? I teach people how to repair, rebuild, destroy their own credit using consumer laws. I also teach credit repair business owners how to scale their credit repair business to make an extra six figures per year using four key principles, lead generation, lead conversion, client ascension, and continuity, Mm. right? Those four can scale any business. I'm also the president and CEO of the Credit Summit, the first of its kind catered to us, people like us, for us, where we are helping people erase their credit worries, elevate their credit score, and putting people in a position to have the power to purchase. But most importantly, we are educating our people so we can change the credit score of our zip codes Mm. to get these payday loans out, these check cash in place out, these pawn shops out, these no credit check needed, buy here, pay here. We need those out of our communities. So... Because they know that we are misinformed, we have become victims of these subprime lenders, and we pay the highest interest rate. We pay, the, we pay double for everything. Bad credit is an expensive life. But before all of what you're seeing now, um, I was born in Jamaica. Right. I am the second of five um, children. Mm. Shout out to my mom. Shout out moms. Mm-hmm. And, um, yeah, I grew up poor. I was running around. Like, we were poor, but we didn't know how much, how really poor we were because everybody around us was poor. Yeah, so yeah. We, everybody was running around with beer foot. Everybody was running around. It was normal. Tra- yeah, it was normal. That's we're gonna we're going to, to hunt birds with our slingshots. <laughs> like, some, some people don't even know about that. Like, we're playing marbles. Like, people don't know about yeah, that yeah, stuff. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So we came from a different time. Not like the time now with everybody got an iPad going. and mm-hmm. they, Yeah, so we came from a different time. Um, I was always into reading. I always loved academics. Um, I was never into sports. I was okay. never that, yeah, I wasn't that kid that was into sports. Um, went to high school, graduated at the top of the high school, left there, went to college. Then I decided that, listen, I'm not going to go to med school. Okay. I'm taking a chance on me. I'm coming to America. And guess what? I'm going to figure it out. All right. It. And at that time, my mom was like frantic. She was like, no, come back home. What are you doing? You got no family there. And like, oftentimes, we introduce our dream to a small-minded person. And, and this is no way, shape, or form, me saying my mom is a small-minded person. But my mom didn't see what I see. Okay. And we're, we're talking about, I'm her child. Her, her maternal instincts are, son, come home. We'll figure it out. I'll take care of you. No, mom, I'm not. Right? So there comes a time when you got to bet on you. And oftentimes, like, 
you will tell the people that surround you, the people that love you, that, yo, I'm going to do this, but they can't see your vision. Can't understand it. It's not, it's not their vision. And I think it's so wrong of us to, to introduce our dreams to people that don't have the capacity to comprehend what we're given, right? Because oftentimes, it's not because they don't believe in you. They don't believe in themselves. They don't believe that it's possible for them. So that fear gets projected onto you. And if I had listened to my mom at that time, I wouldn't have helped millions of people. I wouldn't have been here right now. My mom wouldn't have been financially free right now. Like She can buy whatever she wants. You think that's a, a result of like you know, when they talk about generational curses, you know, when they talk about uh, we were raised not to to almost fear credit. We were raised, hey, man, I want all my stuff paid for. I want to mm -hmm. cash out. You know, all my cars is paid. They used to be a flex mm -hmm. to say that we wanted everything paid for, everything paid for off. And, and you know, and I, I don't need no credit. You know, what I mean, I got money. So the question becomes. Where did that come from? Mm. I want you to think about all the people that were flexing cash. Who were they? Dr drug dealers. Drug dealers. Because that's all they knew on the street, right? Cash. Mm -hmm. Now, think about our counterparts. Hmm. You didn't hear any of our counterparts saying, I'm going to go buy this in full. I'm going to buy all of this with cash. They never said that. Why? Because they created a system for the. Y'all need to comprehend. The system wasn't created for black people. Mm. It wasn't created for us. Hmm. Let me. 1940s, 1950s. People might think that's a long time ago. That's not a long time ago. S like, people were still being discriminated against. When did the whole thing about slavery run away? Hmm. Let's 18, think about that. It was in eight. It, it, it was within the last hundred years. But then let's think about the scrutiny. So even though the slavery might have went away, publicly, privately was still there, mm. because then they came up with new methods of slavery, financial slavery. Come on, redlining, student loans. <laughs> Hate them guys. <laughs> Hate them. <laughs> right? So it, it didn't change. It just changed face. It changed name. Hmm. None of our counterparts were talking about buying anything cash. They understood and they comprehend the power of leverage, the power of credit, and how credit can be used to streamline generational wealth. But we were told that credit was bad. You should cut up our credit cards. Exactly. You should only buy groceries on a credit card. Yeah. Right? Th yeah. These are the things you were taught. Mm -hmm. Credit is the devil. You shouldn't borrow more than what you can use. Listening to Dave Ramsey and Susie Orton, like, misinformation. Hmm. So, if we want to control a population, what do we do? Keep them in the dark. We keep them in the dark. Mm -hmm. We misinform them. We miseducate them. We tell them what to do. So now we breed a group, a demographic of consumers who do whatever we tell them to do. So now for these set of people, the cost of living is going to be extremely more. Hmm. We cannot target them specifically with prices, but we can create a qualification system where if they don't qualify, they are subjected to these financial crises. Mm. So now we told them that credit is bad. We told them credit bureaus exist, which it don't. We told them that you should go everything with cash, so therefore you're building no history, no credit history, no reputation with credit, no relationship with banks. Mm. You can't get qualified for a home. You're paying three times for the car because you are a victim of subprime lending. And they know that we're going to default on those loans because we're living paycheck to paycheck. These are things they already know. So they're preying on our ignorance. Yes. 
So guess what now? The same jobs that you go, right? Mm. You're paying 30%, 35% in taxes. <laughs> Is it really 35 or 30% though? It's not. You're paying more than 51%, probably close to 60. Wow. Okay, let me explain. 35% comes out of the paycheck automatically, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, but does that stop the taxes? No. You go buy clothes, you get taxed. You go to the supermarket, you get taxed. You go take an Uber, you get taxed. You buy a Metro card, you get taxed. You send the kids to school, you get taxed. You buy a car, you pay sales tax. You buy a property, you pay property tax. Wow. So that same paycheck, by the time you're finished with that paycheck, you have less than 40% left. And guess what? The car note wasn't paid yet. The credit cards wasn't paid yet. The student loans weren't paid yet. The mortgages weren't paid yet. So how much are you really left with? In the negatives. So now we know you're living paycheck to paycheck. You're robbing Peter to pay Paul. You cannot catch up on your credit card bills. So in the clause of the terms and agreement, guess what I'm going to put in there? Terms and condition that says if you miss a payment, we can increase the interest rate. And then you're going to agree to it. Because what? We know you don't read the contracts. Dirty game. That, that, that ugly money. Dirty game. Let's... um. Let's rewind. There was a time in your life before you woke up and became knowledgeable in the things that you became knowledgeable for. And you were making about $7.50 an hour. Mm, 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 mm. And you thought Shout you Shout out were, to Dairy Queen. <laughs> and you thought you was up. Shout out. I was <laughs> killing it. So when I just left Jamaica, I moved to New Hampshire, right? Mm. And, bro, I've never been that cold in my entire life. I'm coming from Jamaica, 20 years of sunshine and rain. Dude, I've never seen snow. Wow. Never felt it, never touched it. <laughs> came to New Hampshire. Mm -hmm. Came to New Hampshire. It was a whole nother story. I have never felt cold in my bones before. But I had a mission, and the mission was I needed to help my mom. I needed to help my sisters. I have two younger sisters, mm -hmm. right? So it doesn't matter what I was experiencing at that time. I knew I had to make this work, right? So now we're making this work. I'm making this work. All right, bet. 7.25. 7.25 to you is 7.25. Yeah. 7.25 to me wasn't 7.25 because I knew at the time the rate of one U.S. in Jamaica was $130. Oh, so wow. that's how I calculated it. Wow. So everybody that I knew, I was killing it. <laughs> I was killing it. Yeah, yeah. Because I'm not checking in U.S. currency. I was killing it. You making $750 an hour. Come on. You out of... <laughs> like, so, so you, see what I'm, yeah. you see where I'm going with this? So, so now... That's how I calculated everything. That's how I saw everything for at least the first two years, right? Mm -hmm. But then I realized, dude, if you were making this money in Jamaica, yeah, you'd be making money, but you're not in Jamaica. A dollar here is just a dollar. It's just a dollar. A dollar here is just a dollar. So you're going to still be in that, in that room that you were sharing with your roommates. You're going to still be eating at Dairy Queen, because you don't got money to buy groceries, and you're going to send all your money home. So after a while, I decided to go to New York. Um, like I said, I didn't have any family here, but my mom was able to find my godfather's number. Okay. Right? Shout out to Milton. And he said, come to New York. Um, we'll, we'll figure it out. Went to New York. That was a whole nother story. Because now his wife thought I was his son. <laughs> because wow. I looked I looked like his daughter. Uh oh. Right? So, <laughs> so she, she, she wasn't so feeling she, that. <laughs> so she thought I was his son. It took a while, but eventually everything got good. We got cool and all. 
But then I got a job at Five Guys, right? Oh, wow. Now I was, now I was making eight twenty five. Man, whole, you kill it. A whole dollar. <laughs> I was killing it now, right? I was shaking them basket 19 times, bro. I was the best <laughs> fry cook on the line, right? What up? So you have a brand, you have a business, and you want to get the word out. In the last 90 days, we did over 30 million views on YouTube, over 50 million views on social media sites. Promote your business on the Ugly Money Podcast. Let me help you Turn your business up. Make sure you text the number right here below. We'll schedule a call and let's get it popping. Let's get it. Let's get it moving. Let's get that brand and that business out of here. Yeah, you can be an official sponsor of the Ugly Money Podcast. And China just left. See y'all in a minute. Text us. What 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 part of life woke you up from that? So fast forward. Joined the military, um, went active duty, right? Ac active reserve. Um, for those of you who don't know what it is, it's when you're with the National Guard, your state can have active duty missions where you go on orders. It's called active reserve. So I was active reserve from 2014 to 2019. And, dude, I was just angry. I was programmed. I was in the 40-40-40 club, right? So 40 hours a week for 40 years. 40% of your pension, right? That's, that's what I believed in. I'm going to go get a city job. I'm going to do this military thing for 20 years. I was drinking the Kool-Aid, right? <laughs> I was. I was drinking the Kool-Aid. Oh, man. And then I was supposed to get a job with the city in the environmental protection division doing hazmat protection. And then I put in a two-week notice to the active duty slot that I had. Let them know, hey, I'm getting a job with the city. Boom, boom, boom. They brought in somebody and I started training my replacement. Now, the same December of 2018 came around. Um, was it 18? No, 19. December of 2019 came around. And, bro, I was there and I was like, Something's going on. Mm. I'm not hearing from these dudes. So when I called, the position was no longer available. Mind you, I put in a two-week notice already, wow. and I'm training my replacement. Wow. So I spoke to the to the um, the colonel that was in charge of the mission, and he said, "Yo, we can. Uh, we know it's the holidays. Uh, we can keep you on for December, but come January." You know, we're going to have to let you go. I was angry, bro. I had my son. I was angry because now my son was three years old. Mm. I've For the last six years, I've only known my active duty check. What, what was I about to do? But I didn't know that God was setting me up for a comeback. Man, brother. And, and a lot of you, sometimes you got to go through some stuff to get to your stuff. And I didn't know... That was my test. I was being tested. I was, I had to go through some stuff. So I was at the barber shop. And my barber was saying that he just bought this book for his niece. It's called Rich Dad Poor Dad. Yes, I was ignorant. I was angry. I'm like, Rich Dad Poor Dad, what kind of dumbass book is that? Motherfucker got two dads. Dumbass book. <laughs> but that was me being ignorant. Yes, I sir. was ignorant, yes, right? Sir. And... I also have a curious mind. Mm -hmm. So I needed to know what this rich dad, poor dad stuff was. Yeah. So then when I was driving home, I went on YouTube and I said, rich dad, poor dad, audiobook. It came up. Bruh. My life changed. You programmed your mind. Bruh. My whole life changed. So I had to, like, I listened to the audiobook six times. I had to buy the physical book, and I read it again and again and again. Just so you could get it. Yes. Then after Rich Dad, Poor Dad came Napoleon Hill, Think and Grow, Think Rich. And grow Rich. Dude, I was the old me. <laughs> it was time for the old me to die. Welcome the new me. Mm. And I started reading, bro. I started reading. So, boom, we went on deployment, right? I read 140 books. I was reading. When all my friends was outside working out, fraternizing, getting in trouble, going off base, dude, I was in my room reading. Hmm. I got in trouble for reading. 
my E6. In the military. Yeah, E6 came over to me. Oh, Sergeant Delevante, you're always reading. Okay, what's the problem? It's not army related. I said this. Listen to me and listen to me well. You're going to have to motherfucking send me home. <laughs> because right now, I this book is not going anywhere. So, pack me up, pack my books up, and send me back home. I will be reading. And that is when I really understood and comprehend the power of an educated black man. Respect, brother. Now, so, it, they, they say that you're... Um, you're not exactly the most religious man, but you're spiritual. I am very... Religion is used to control people. I'm not with the whole religion. If we all know there's one God, why do we have 50, 100 <laughs> different religions? You got a point, what are you, what, What's each one selling that the other one is not? It's confusion. Yeah. I am spiritually inclined. I believe there's an alpha and an omega. There are beginning and an end. We didn't just appear out of nowhere. Sure. Somebody is there. I don't know who that somebody is. Whether it's God, Yahshua, Yahweh, mm. whatever they want to call him, Allah, Buddha. It, they could all be referring to the same dude. But whoever that dude is, that's who I want to talk to. I don't want to go through their religious babble because it's too much confusion. It, there's so much separ Why is there so much separation between Jews, Christians, Muslims, um, Buddhists? Like, if we're all worshiping the same, why is there so much confusion? So I, I leave that religious stuff alone, they, man. They, they, That's they, politics. They want to know who to cut the check to. <laughs> they want to know who to cut the check to. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah now, that, that's now, politics, uh, man. I leave that stuff alone. Question, why is focusing on lack, why does that create chaos? Because when you focus on lack, you miss everything else. You miss your abundance. So let's take it back. The first temptation of lack came where? In the Garden of Eden. You can eat of every fruit in the garden except one. The day you eat from this, food, from this tree, you shall surely die. Mm -hmm. The devil came in and whispered in the woman's ear. And have the woman walk past all of the abundance, everything, everything in the garden to the one thing that they lacked, <laughs> that one fruit. And there goes man's downfall. So when, when, when things have. happen to us, we focus so much on that thing that happened to us that, you know, let me be thankful I'm still alive. Let me be thankful I can still read. Let me be thankful I can still comprehend. But we focus on, oh my God, I just lost a job. What's going to happen to me? Well, this gives you an opportunity to invest in yourself. This gives you an opportunity to rebuild your mind. This gives you an opportunity to become a new person. Mm. Right? Be ye renowned to, through a new mind. It is not the movement of the clock that starts and produces the newness of life. It's the movement in your mind. Your mind is the single most powerful thing. So when, they, when some people say things like broke is just a mentality, being broke is just a mentality, your, your, your mind's broke. It is true because I had it. I had a broke mind. And when I had a broke mind, I was broke. I lived paycheck to paycheck. And the minute I had an abundance and a rich mind, my income showed the same thing. Now, um, there is a time in a man's life where you know, he, has to, he must do work. They, they they like to call it a, a gravitropic a gravitropic gravitropic moment. moment. Yeah, uh, detail yours. All right, 2020 was my gravitropic moment. A whole year I did not participate in anything but self development okay. and education. Okay, okay, right. I, I feel what you're doing. And everyone that I deployed with, all Sergeant Nelevante is just walking around with a book. Every day he got a book, and you know what happened now? I'm rich and the asses are broke. <laughs> so, 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 people don't want to go through some stuff to get to their stuff. Come on now. You see, your gravitrophic moments are your most important moments. This is where the character is built. This is where you will be tested. This is where you will be tried. And if you... Does If you don't have the mental fortitude to come out on top, you will never get to bring forth 
what is inside of here. Mm. You see, when we think about a seed that springs up and, 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 and bears the newness of life, and we think about when we bury a body. Do you notice that both of them go through the same process? They break down. They, bo they both get buried, right? Yes, sir. So we got to dig something up, and both of them get buried. But you see, when we bury something, we bury it to hide it, to cover it. But when we plant a seed, even though it's the same process, we are expecting a transformation. Yes, sir. We're expecting growth. People cannot differentiate between being buried and being planted. So sometimes when they're going through some stuff, oh, Lord, why this has to happen to me? Why me this? Well, if not you, who? Do you have a name or an address that you want to send? What's happening? Because your blessing could be in this package, mm. but because you weren't patient. Hmm. Because you gave up too soon. Because you didn't give it a chance to grow. See, a lot of seed can be planted in different soil. But not all soil is conducive for that seed to grow. The environment. That's all. That's all. That's all. That's all. <laughs> who, who are you with? right there, baby. <laughs> <laughs> Who are you with? Who are the people that you talk to? Who do you speak with every single day? Who are you texting? Who's robbing you of your time talking to you for two hours on a cell phone when you could be developing your mind? We have stealers of dreams. We have energy vampires. Hmm. Protect your energy. Because people only want shit from you. Reciprocity. What do you give? For what you receive. People just want to get, get, get. But they don't want to give. It don't work like that. They want something for nothing. It don't work like that. If you put in nothing, you get nothing back. I don't know what vending machine they're going to. <laughs> but I know for a fact, you got to put something yes, in sir. to get something out. Facts. And life is the same. Yeah, to yeah. every action, there's an equal and opposite reaction. So why do you think you can get something without giving something in return? That's respect. So I, 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 I gotta. I want to shift gears, um, because I, I I want these people to understand our listeners to understand just what it looks like when you you operate in a, your, your higher self. When you operate, when when you do bury that seed and it grows into something new. And it's maybe a little personal question, but you know you can or cannot answer it. What is the most amount of money that you've made in a day I think in one day we did like maybe 170,000 yet yeah I'm working <laughs> towards a million dollar day right now hmm. I'm, I'm cracking the code for a million dollar day $170,000 in one day some people don't make that all year most people don't make Dude, that. I was yet. making seventy thousand a year, and I thought I was killing it. Well, the national average for a, a black man is forty-eight thousand. See, average. Hmm. I cannot be average. That means I gotta learn more, consume more, be more, perform more than everybody else. I cannot be average. I refuse to be a common man. Come on. Why would I want to be common when I have a God that says, you are made in the image and likeness of me. Abundance is your birthright. Amen. Why would I want to be average? Why would any of us want to be? You'd be surprised. Many were called, but few were chosen. You know, it, it, and you know, I want to expound on that because, you know, I have conversations with guys I might have went to school with, right? Mm -hmm. And... You know, when I was moving and in, in, in my process of, of, of moving here to Atlanta or, or any kind of business move that I would make, they would always turn their nose up at me. And I'm like, man, 
Now, if I tell you I got a job, you say congratulations. Mm-hmm. But if I tell you I started a business, mm-hmm. you say it's not going to work. It's stupid. It's not going to work. Yeah. Who do you think you are about to start a business? <laughs> what gives you that right? Yeah. The naysayers, leave them alone. Let them go. It's time we start trimming the fat, bro. Come we got to let these people go. If they're not speaking life into you, All right. if they are not contributing to your growth, if they're not contributing to your self-development, if these are energy vampires that just take, 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 let them go. So you're an artist, an actor, an activist, whatever you do, Come to the Ugly Money Podcast and tell your story. You can be a special invited guest by texting the number right here. Let's lock in your interview. Let's tell the world what you got going on. Over the past 90 days, we've gotten 30 million views on YouTube, 50 million views on social media sites. It's time for the world to know about you. So make sure you text this number so you can come on the Ugly Money Podcast. And you get to meet China too. It's that ugly money. Myron Golden. Mm. Uh, who is he to you, and uh, why do you pay him one hundred and fifty-five thousand dollars a year? Myron is one of the most amazing humans I've ever met. Wow. See, I was thinking so small, thinking that sixty thousand a year was great, and. My man said, yo, make more offers. Went on one of his challenge, came off, got fired from the military because they sent all the money to Ukraine. But that's a whole nother story. <laughs> whole nother story, man. <laughs> First month of being an entrepreneur, made $97,000. Wow. Myron, right? Use that money to expand my business, join more mentorships, Learn about digital products, learn about websites, funnels, learn about systems, automations. Um, And then I joined Myron. And I'm seeing people, you you think me making $100,000 a day is nothing. Dude, my friends do $9 million in a day, bro. Like, like... I am the one in the room right now yeah. that's making the least amount of money. Wow. <laughs> I've seen people do a $10 million day. I've seen it. I've seen a $5 million day, not even a day, $5 million close in 27 minutes. It's a whole nother category of people. And the thought processes are different. Bruh. Well, they say if you if you're in a room with with four losers, you're gonna be the fifth, and if you're in a room with four millionaires, you're gonna be the fifth. It only makes sense. It only makes sense. Show me your friends, I'll tell you who you are. The people you hang around with, the things you consume will determine your outcome. Hmm. So if you're around broke people talking broke people shit all day, you're going to be broke. Yeah. <laughs> but if you're around rich people talking rich people shit all day, by default, you're going to be rich. We'll figure something you out. You think rich people are really going to hang around with you and you're broke? They're not. Hmm. Let's all pull up in our Lambos. Let's all pull up in our Mercedes. Let's all pull up in our Bentleys. That's how they roll. They learn something that made them a million. Guess what they're going to do? They're going to tell you. So you can have a million dollar day too. The now, conversations are different. T- tell me the difference between a rich man's conversation and a poor man's conversation. So you'll hear the poor person say, I can't do this. I don't have this. I don't have the time. I got to go to work. My boss is going to kill me. I'm going to get fired. Right? Right? A rich, pe- a rich person says, well, how can I do this? What people do I need to get in contact with to get this done? Mm. Hmm, instead of me go finding a job, let me go find some problems and then me, let me solve those problems so I can get some money. Solve a problem. Solve problems, you make a lot of money. Yes, sir. 
So the mindset is completely different. You will notice that rich people, they're normally very happy. They have an abundance mindset. How are you doing? I'm doing great. I am successful. How are you? <laughs> For sure. I made to be Because we comprehend the power of words and the things that you speak into your life, they happen. In the beginning was the word. The word was with God. The word became flesh. As a man thinketh in his heart, so is he. Words are powerful. Words can cut you deeper than any weapon. Facts. Facts. Let's let's um let's break down some barriers. I think uh a lot of the reasons why people a lot of people don't tap into credit is is fear and ignorance, right? Mm -hmm. uh, ignorance of knowing exactly how it works. And fear of getting scammed, of getting robbed, mm. of getting, you know. So first and foremost, if, if I'm a person that is not familiar with the process of improving my credit and getting those, getting those things in, in line, how can I know the difference between a credible credit repair service mm. and one that's just capping? All right. So let's go back to fear, right? False evidence appearing real. Oftentimes, we're crippled by the things that we think about, and we give life to things that aren't really there. Mm. So that fear of, of the creation that we just created keeps us, keeps us bound to a mindset that is not conducive to our success, right? And when it comes to credit, well, the reason why we don't know about credit is because we've been misinformed intentionally, right? So now that we know and we are waking up from the matrix, the question now becomes, now that you know the information is there, the question is, what are you going to do about it? Yes, there are scammers out there. But guess what? You've already been scammed. Because you went to school, you got a job, you have fifty to one hundred thousand dollars in student loans, barely making thirty-five thousand. So you'll never finish paying that student loan off. You're paying fifty-one to sixty percent in taxes when you're finished. There's nothing left for you to save. You've already been scammed. It's too late for me to scam you. You've already been scammed. But what I can do is teach you. What I can do is. Tell you to go to Doreen Delevante, D A R A I N E D E L E V A N T E, on YouTube and go watch my free content because my free content is better than people's paid content. Hey, right? I got a $47 FICO ebook that I made that showed them how I built an 800 credit score three times in one year. Guess what they got to do? Text the word FICO, F I C O to 917-993-5238. But guess what? I tell them, text the word FICO, F-I-C-O, to 917-993-5238. For every 10 person that watches this episode, probably one person would do it. But then these are the same people, the nine that remains, are going to still be in the comments talking about he's a scam. Wow. So let's get our facts right. <laughs> So what do we do? Responsibility. When do you become responsible and own your own truth that all the decisions that you have made up until this point in your life right now is the reason why you are where you are? See, we're all self-made, but only the rich will admit it. When do we become accountable? And earlier, you spoke about... You spoke about talking about a, a credit repair company, how do you know if one's real? If they are not willing to explain to you their process and what is happening and keep you updated on a weekly or bi-weekly basis, something's wrong. Mm -hmm. If everything with that credit repair company is a secret, something is wrong. Mm -hmm. If that credit repair business owner don't have a mentor, Something is wrong. A mentor that don't have a mentor doesn't need to be your mentor. You need to run the other way. Because when I pour into you, who pours into me? <laughs> you can't pour from an empty cup. Amen. Amen, brother. Um, you recently said college is a scam. I want to, uh, let's expound on that. Okay. I got a high school diploma. All right. Mm-hmm. 
I make more than people with PhDs. <laughs> talk that talk. Talk that talk. It's cool if y'all want to go spend two, three hundred thousand dollars to go get a degree, master's, and PhD. I ain't got no beef with it. Mm. I just know when I spend one hundred and fifty-five thousand on mentorship, I know that can make me two mil, right? So if I spend a million next on mentorship, right. how much you think I'm gonna make? Probably a cool ten mil. Yep. So now your degree ain't gonna get you rich. <laughs> it's not. It probably can get you in the middle class, which is just upper poor. That's all it is. Upper poor. Yeah. Because now you see all the shiny stuff and you're living like the Joneses now because you can afford a house and a Mercedes. But now you're living like the Joneses so much that you still live paycheck to paycheck. Wow. You know, uh, it was interesting. Someone had said that uh, Steve Jobs is a college dropout. List them. And in order Bill to- Gates. Yeah. Yeah. Elon Musk. Yeah. Zuckerberg. Yeah. Keep going, Damon John. Yeah. yeah all, all, all of them. Yeah. And, and in order. Don't it make the richest people on the planet are college dropouts? <laughs> if that don't ring a bell, so I, but you know, what do but, I know? But I in, order, diploma, in right? order to work at a high level at Steve Jobs' company, you have to have a college degree in order yeah. to work there. Well, that's easy because A students work for C students. And it's true. Yeah. A students work for C students. Correct. That's hard. <laughs> that's that's uh that's that's uh yeah. And yeah. I'm not sense. saying there's anything wrong with a job. Yeah. Jobs are important. Work on your nine to five so you can build a freedom for the rest of your life. Yes, sir. There's nothing wrong with having a job. We need doctors. We need lawyers. We need police officers. We need our tax people. We, we, different folks, different strokes. But I'm telling you, if you're broke like a joke and you're ready to choke, yeah. obviously you need to figure some shit out. Yeah, you need to switch it up. And if we learned anything from COVID, one stream of income is not enough. Talk about it, brother. It's not. It shook up some things. It definitely shook up. You know, for some people, COVID was a nightmare. You know, you see a lot of infrastructures fall. And then for some people, COVID was a blessing mm -hmm. because you see a lot of different independent entities rise up. Why do you think that? Because everything travels in pair. And we, were, we are so distracted to see one thing that we miss the most important thing. Crisis, right? Crisis has a twin. It's called opportunity. Good, bad. Night, day. Hmm. They're twins. They all travel as pairs. Yeah. So when a person sees crisis, I've been trained now to see opportunity. We just look at things differently. That's hard. Because if, like for instance, if there's a, we're, 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 they say we're going into a recession. Who said that? The days. <laughs> right? Um, what type of opportunities are there when the economy is not doing well? Well, we need to look at the problems people are going to have during that time. Mm. We solve those problems. The money ain't going nowhere. It's still here. Mm. They printed trillions of it. It ain't going to just disappear. Right? It's here somewhere. So... If you can anticipate the problems that people would have in a recession. You put infrastructure in place to solve it. That's why people that knew that COVID was going to hit beforehand, they made so much money. There's a thing called insider information where people on the inside knows what's going to happen. Right? Mm -hmm. So they get wind of it first. They make the necessary changes that they need to make. They become multi, multi, multi millionaires. Some people become billionaires. Shit, look at Bill Gates. Motherfucker made billions off of COVID vaccines. Yeah. I look at, uh, on the street level, I look at OnlyFans. <laughs> Yo. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Let, <laughs> like, let me take like, a drink. Think about it. Keep it all the way real. Like, these girls went from the strip club to stripping in the, in the they, house. They couldn't strip at the clubs anymore. Yeah, yeah. But motherfuckers still wanted to see <laughs> some pussy. So, so what do we do? <laughs> we find a platform yeah. that can facilitate our nudeness. Mm-hmm. 
right? <laughs> we make it rain in the basement Come now. On, baby. Yeah. Problem solved. <laughs> Billion dollar company. Girls became millionaires off of OnlyFans. Do you believe that the quickest way to become a billionaire is to help other people become millionaires? Well, it depends. There's multiple ways to do it, but that's one way. But another way to do it, well, all right, for instance, let's use Grand Cordon as an example, mm -hmm. right? Grand Cordon has about twelve to 15,000 apartments, paying him $1,800 a month. Do you know how much he makes per month? How much? Where's your phone? Right here. Let's do the calculation. I think it's about seventeen million. But if he I, has fifteen thousand, you said fifteen thousand apartments. Fifteen thousand apartments. Mm -hmm. And how much a month? Eighteen hundred. Eighteen hundred a month. Fifteen thousand times eighteen hundred. He makes twenty-seven million dollars a month. Mm -hmm. Multiply times by twelve. Twelve. He makes three hundred and twenty-four million dollars a year. Probably change. No, excuse me. That's not three hundred twenty-four. Yeah, three hundred and twenty-four. Wait a minute. Turn it sideways. I'm not even. I don't even know what number this is. <laughs> hey, <laughs> I don't even know what number this is. It's a whole bunch of zeros. <laughs> it broke the calculator. Well, that's just one business. One business. One streaming. Grant account. owns over 150 companies. Wow. Solve people's problem. Amazon. What's Amazon's promise? Prime. Two. Yeah. You get your item two days or less. Hmm. So your your Amazon Prime, you don't even have to leave your house to go anywhere. We're gonna make it so easy that you'll get it the next day. Hmm. Order it tonight, overnight shipping. You don't gotta leave your house. Yeah. Uber Eats. <laughs> you don't even have to go to the restaurant. We'll Jeez. bring the food to you. So do you comprehend that every time there's a crisis Opportunity goes for those who can see when everything, when the dust settles. I love it. I love it. We just got to figure out, hey, Stan, we just got to figure out uh, what these folk going to need next year. Correct. You know what I'm saying? They might need uh, pink umbrellas. <laughs> and we need to go get about 500000 <laughs> Solve uh, people's problems. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yo, have you got your gorge yet? All natural male supplement, improving size, boost libido, and stamina. And no, I'm not paying attention to her because I got that engorged. So if you really want to handle your business the way you got to handle your business, go to engorged.com today to get yours. Do that thing again, China Red. Yeah, it's an engorged thing. Why, do you, why, why are there so many credit repair companies popping up? Well, there's not enough. Mm. There's 334 million people in America. There's not enough credit repair company to service all of them. 60% of people live paycheck to paycheck. Mm. Right? That's about 195 million. If you live paycheck to paycheck, that also means that you got bad credit because you're robbing Peter to pay Paul. Mm. There's not enough credit repair businesses to service 195 million people in the U.S. There's not enough. Wow. So we need more. Yes. Solve the problem. Solve the problem. Now, um, <laughs> our President Joe Biden Jeez. recently forgave student loans. Now, my homies told me that you can get those loans taken off of your credit anyway. Correct. Correct. So it doesn't, it doesn't just stop with student loans. So any account on your credit can be deleted. It doesn't matter what it is. You, the consumer, have the right to delete it. Now, what I want people to comprehend is that not because you delete something from your credit, mm -hmm. it don't mean that the obligation you had went away. It's just not on your credit. Mm. So you still got to pay it. I'm not saying you need to pay it or not. Okay. I'm not your daddy. I'm okay. not, I don't know what yeah, you yeah. want to do. Yeah. I am letting you know that not because you delete an item from your credit, it means the obligation or the alleged obligation isn't there. So the bill is still there, but nobody else can see it. There you go. You control the report. You have the right. Your, your consumer report has to be private. Your consumer report is confidential. Your information must 
be protected. 15 U.S.C. 1681A4. You have the right to privacy. So if I get evicted from my house, mm -hmm. and I got an eviction on my record, mm -hmm. I can get that removed, but I still need to take care of that. Well, that's if you want to take care of it. If it's an eviction, <laughs> it's an eviction. Okay. But you can delete the eviction from your credit because number one is, when did you give them written permission to report anything on your credit? Was that rent being reported on your credit? Probably mm -mm. not. Mm -mm. So who gave them written permission? 15 U.S.C. 1681B. A consumer reporting agency may furnish a consumer report under the following circumstances and no other. B2 says, with written permission from the consumer to whom it relates. Wow. And these are the things that the common man just doesn't know. It's there. I mean, the law was here before I came from Jamaica. <laughs> right? It was yeah. here before I got here. So the things that people don't know, the people that do know use it against them because sure. they don't know. So how do we opt out of, like, how do we opt out of, like, you know, getting, you know, our info reported? 15 U.S.C. 6802B. It, the section itself says opt out. And it breaks <laughs> down all the things that you need to do wow. and all the things that's required for you to opt out. Sound like you got like a, a cheat code. Like we playing Madden and you don't press <laughs> Mortal Kombat and he didn't press back, back, up, up, A, B, and it's just poof, gone. Like that's all, man. Why, why do you, um, bankruptcy? Mm hmm. How does the reporting of bankruptcy fall under identity theft? So the question now becomes, who gave them permission to report your information? So let's walk through it real quick. Mm. You got your phone? I'm here. All right. So I'm going to have you go to 15 USC. Mm -hmm. 1681- B2. 1681. B2. B2. Mm -hmm. It should bring in the permissible purpose. Permissible purposes All right. of consumer reports. What does it say? Permissible Permissible purposes of consumer report. U.S. code. It says the code. Hold on. Let mm -hmm. me let me tap it. Let me tap it. Let's get educated today, ladies and gentlemen. Subject to Subsection, any consumer reporting agency may furnish a consumer report under the following circumstances and no other. One, in response to the order of the court having jurisdictions to issue such an order, a subpoena issued in mm -hmm. connection to with proceedings before. So that's if a court decides that they want to use a report for something. What does number two say? In accordance with written instructions from the consumer to whom it relates. All right. Now I want you to go to 15 U.S.C. 1681Q. We're going to Q. Hold on, y'all. We getting, we getting, it's a lot. So you're going to have to come out of, of that and then. It's a lot of, it's a lot of so, info. And then type in. We 1681 have B2, Q. Just delete the B2 and put Q there. Mm -hmm. oh, okay. Definitions and rules of construction set forth in this section are applicable for the purposes of the subchapter. Mm, like the the term see. person. No, means, not that one. Let okay. me see. I want you to go to Q. Oh, you're still at A. That's why. Okay. 16, A. I'm late. No, no, it's all good. We get, we get, we get taught up. Yeah, 16, wake us up. One Q. Hmm. Obtaining information under false pretenses. Any person who Any knows. Any person. What does the word person mean? Click on it. Person. The term person means individual, partnership, corporation, trust, estate, cooperative, association, government, or governmental subdivision or agency of, mm -hmm. of entity. So that means a corporation is a person. Yes, sir. Which means Experian, TransUnion, and Equifax, right? Mm, yes. All right. So go back now to the def to the section. What does it say? Any person who knowingly and willfully obtains information on a consumer from a consumer reporting agency under false pretenses shall be fined under Title 18, imprisoned for not more than two years or both. All right. So now I want you to Google one more thing. Yes, sir. 18 U.S.C. 
18 USC 1028A. 1028A. A. What does that bring you? Aggravated identity theft. Go ahead and read it. Offenses. In general, whoever during and in relation to any felony violation enumerated in subsection knowingly transfers, possesses, or uses. Read that part slowly. Knowingly. Knowingly transfers. Transfers. Possesses. Possesses. Or uses. Or uses. Without lawful authority. Without lawful authority. A means of identification of another person shall, in addition okay. to the punishment, provided such a felony be sentenced. Man, they going to lock these folk up for giving us bail. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That ugly morning. Yeah. Now, let's put all of that together. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. 15 U.S.C. 1681b2. A consumer reporting agency may furnish a consumer report under the following circumstances and no other. With the written instructions from the consumer to whom it relates. Which means, if Experian goes to LexisNexis for my consumer report, they must have written permission. That is law. You just read it. Mm. 15 U.S.C. 1681 Q says, what, is, what did that say again? The Q one? The Q one. Obtaining know. information under yeah. what? False, False pretenses. pretenses. Yeah. Any person who obtains a consumer report from a consumer reporting agency about a consumer under false pretenses shall be fined under Title 18. Experian, TransUnion, and Equifax, these are persons. These are corporations. They are going to another consumer reporting agency, LexisNexis, to obtain information about a consumer under false pretenses. And that's how we get it. Well, hold on. Hmm. Well, that sounds to me like the definition of identity theft. Yes, sir. What did 18 U.S.C. say? Any person hmm. who knowingly uses, possesses, or transfers a means of identification of another person without lawful authority, yeah. that's the definition for aggravated identity theft. Two years. Right? <laughs> Two yes, years, sir. right? Yes, sir. Well, how did they know that you are tied to this information if they did not use an identification of you. Hmm. Hmm. Well, the last one, 15 U.S.C. 1681 C2, that's the last one I'm going to have you look up. And I want you to tell me what it says. 15 U.S.C. Mm -hmm. 1681 C2. Mm -hmm. Block of information resulting from identity theft. Except or otherwise provided in this section, a consumer reporting agency shall block the reporting. Shall what? Block. Shall what? <laughs> block it. Okay. The reporting of any information in the file of a consumer that the consumer identifies as information that resulted from an alleged identity theft. Not later than four business days after the date of the receipt. How many days? Four days. How many days? Four business days, okay. actually. After the date of the receipt by such agency. All right. So that's how you get a bankruptcy deleted in four days. So you can't say you don't know how to delete a bankruptcy now. You know how to delete a bankruptcy now. Wow. There you go. Okay. So people with this information mm -hmm. may use it in the wrong way, right? Pigs get fed. Hogs get slaughtered. Come on. Let's go. <laughs> I like it. I like it. With great power comes great responsibility. Respect, respect, respect. We need to learn how to use things for our benefit and not be greedy with the shit. Mm. That's why a lot of people get in trouble. Because now, when you overuse anything, you just violated the whole essence of the thing. Hmm. You abused it. Use it for yourself and your family. If you're going to run a business deleting bankruptcy, do that. But don't go do nefarious shit. And because you know you can delete certain stuff, you go use it as a scapegoat. It doesn't work like that. Use it because you need it. Use it because you need it. Use it to help others. Use it to help your family. Meaning, ladies and gentlemen, don't just go be burning out these accounts and spending all this money and then go try to get it deleted by going to uh, the shit we talked about today. Goddamn. <laughs> 
I gotta put it in layman's terms. You know what I'm saying? They gotta, they gotta yeah, mean it, bro. Don't go out here and just goddamn go buy the Lambo and say I'm filing bankruptcy again for the second time this month. They don't work like that, bro. They gonna lock your black ass up. Freak out. <laughs> Hey man, what's the difference between Consumer Reports and FICO? Um, FICO is a credit score based on an algorithm that predicts that predicts the risk of a person. That's on a scale from 300 to 850. Your Consumer Report is the information that is used to put in this algorithm that gives you that risk score. Oh wow! Okay, okay. So that, that so FICO is like the the calculations of Correct. the risk. Okay, okay, okay. Is it true that credit bureaus don't even exist? Absolutely. How? How? how <laughs> I just passed one. So you how, did? Yeah, I just passed one. You sure? It was it said credit bureau. You're, you're positive. It, it, I'm pretty sure it said credit bureau. You put, how much are you willing to I'm bet? Not, on I'm it? not positive. You want to put five grand on it? No, I don't want to put five grand on it. But you said you just passed it. It said credit bureau. You are sure? Say credit union. <laughs> <laughs> now you got me thinking. He's, wait a minute. It said credit union. Oh, credit union. Yeah, it said credit union. Okay. Not credit bureau. You got me confused. <laughs> Tell me the difference. Okay. So 15 U.S.C. 1681A, in the definitions, it tells you what a consumer reporting agency is. So um, just for the correct definition, I don't want to paraphrase it, mm -hmm. put in uh, 15 U.S.C. 1681A. 15 U.S.C. 1681A. 1681A. Right? And then now, when you go there, you're going to see the word consumer report. It's going to bring you to definition rules and construct. Yes, sir. In and general, you're going to yeah. see consumer reporting agency somewhere there. Mm -hmm. Click on it. Uh, our, it, it will, our, our, the definition is there. Yeah. You can read it. Consumer reporting agency. The term consumer reporting agency means any person which, for monetary fees, dues on a cooperative nonprofit basis, regularly engage in whole or in part to practice of assembling or evaluating consumer credit information or other inf information on consumers for the purpose of finish, furnishing consumer reports to third parties. Wow. And which uses any means or facility to interstate commerce for the purpose of preparing or furnishing consumer reports. Mm -hmm. Did you hear the word credit bureau in there? No. Credit bureaus don't exist. This episode is being brought to you by Engorge Rejuvenation Tea, promoting erections, improving stamina, promotes endurance, increases size, and boosts libido. So if you ever want to give her that pressure, if you ever need some extra oomph, Go to engorge.com. That's E N dash G O R G E dot com to get yours today. Get my money out of there, I got no. <laughs> hey, man, we're hey we waking us up today, man. We are waking us up today, ladies and gentlemen. We are waking us up today, man. Um, what are consumer laws? Is that what we we're just speaking about? Yeah, consumer laws are laws put in place by. Congress to protect the consumer from debt collectors, um, subprime lenders, consumer reporting agencies, banks, firms, government agencies. It's, it's laws to protect the consumer okay. because the consumer, they are not educated and informed about the informed use of credit. And what happened in the past was these consumer reporting agencies, were, they were reporting anything they wanted mm. on consumers. And they were exposing personal information, and laws had to be put in place to regulate the industry to protect the consumers. Now, I was trying to get me a loan a time in my life. Mm -hmm. I wanted to get 500000 to build this studio. Mm -hmm. And I got denied. Mm -hmm. So I had to build this studio out of my pocket, which I don't uh, recommend to anybody. So I put about a quarter of a million dollars of my own hard-earned money into building my facility. Mm -hmm. What is the the reason why people get denied? All right. So people get denied for many reasons, right? Mm. Um, there are laws in place, but there's also standards in place, right? And the standards are, okay, 
if you meet certain data points, you will get approved for this. If your if your credit is from 640 to 850, we can extend this to you. If it's lower than that, then you fall into the subprime category. So depending on what is reported, what might be on your consumer report, these are things that can either make you get approvals or denials. Okay. Right? So let's say that you're going in for a mortgage and then you got two repossessions and late payments. Well, you're not going to get that mortgage. Nope. You get what I'm saying? Yes, sir. If you're applying for a credit card and then we saw that you maxed out on the last 10 credit cards that you have, mm. you're not getting it. No. Nah. So it is a way for the underwriters to see, okay, is this person competent enough for us to extend this line of credit to? So mm. based on what is reported, then the answer of you getting approved or denied comes into place. However, inaccurate information is reported on people's consumer reports. So it is your job, the consumer... Yeah, they had a phone on my joint that I had never had before in my life. My point. So probably you were a victim of identity theft. It could have been that someone used your information to open up a phone line. Well, all right. my shit on my credit report, I didn't need theft dig. <laughs> so, so this is where yeah. you gotta check it to see. Yeah. Okay, whose name is on there? Is it your name, or is there other people's names on there? Is the address on there your address and only address, or is your other addresses on there that you don't recognize? If there's names and addresses on the report that you don't recognize, you have been a victim of identity theft. Wow. Someone used your information to access lines of credit. And so I just need to find a credit repair specialist. You can, but you can totally do it yourself. And this is what a lot of people don't know. You can absolutely repair, rebuild, and restore your own credit. All you need is information. There it is. There it is. I want to talk about CPNs. Now, CPNs. I'm going to tell, tell, tell you a story. I, I don't trust CPNs. I'm going to tell, tell you a story. Them, that's, that's but why, I'll listen to your yeah, story. Yeah, that's why, that's why I, I, I want to talk about it, okay? I got Let a homegirl. I got a homegirl, you know what I'm saying? And uh, I met a beautiful chick, you know? And so she was like... You know, Nietzsche, I'm going to move to Atlanta. And I was like, oh, you need to. You know, it's a great place. So mm -hmm. she was moving here, and she gets down here, and she's supposed to get a place and everything like that, and she calls me crying. And she's like, oh, well, they, you know, they're saying I got to get out because something's wrong with the CPN. And something went bad. Uh, what the hell is a CPN? And uh, It's a credit privacy number. So basically, it's a number very similar to your social that um, a person can use instead of a social. Mm. Um, CPNs, sometimes they take them from people that died. They take it from people that left the country. It, like they, they take CPNs from various places, right? Yeah. And uh, what they do is they build a profile on, on the CPN and then give it to someone. It's kind of like identity theft, right? So so CPNs, you can get locked up for using CPNs. Like there's people that's been locked up. There's people that have tried to buy cars using CPNs. C stay away from CPNs. I don't teach about it. Anybody talk to me about CPN, I'm like, my course is not the course for you. I, it can get you into so much problems. I. I don't want that type of smoke. So we don't rep we we don't recommend CPN. No, I don't. There's people that do it. Listen, if that's your beef, bro, that's your thing. If that's your hustle, that's your hustle. I got nothing against you or what you do. I just don't do it. It's just not my thing. All right, homie, don't mess with the CPN. Stay away from it. Stay away from it. <laughs> hey, um, uh, uh, Money Man, who uh, is a rapper that you know commonly talks about credit and just a lot of different business tactics you know what i'm saying on one of his songs uh well games he talks about burning burning business accounts burning them out do you know exactly what that is well you can interpret that in many different ways until you ask him the definition of what he meant by burning accounts out um, for me, if you're burning business accounts out, it means you are using the business accounts to either one, um, buy more assets uh, for creation of new um, wealth. There's different ways I would burn my accounts. And when I say burn my accounts, is I'm just using the money that's in there. Like I'll go buy a food truck, I'll go buy car washes, I'll go start a business, 
Mm. Like that's what I burn my business business accounts to do because I don't want my money sitting in the bank where the bank is lending my money out, making 12, 15, 20%, and they're only paying me 0.05%. That math ain't math. Ain't. It ain't math. It's, it's not. They're using your money to make their more money. That shit don't make no sense. So when my sense. bank accounts get to $100,000 or more, I get nervous. It needs to be spent. So my definition of burning a business bank account is I need to spend these funds. And I'm going to spend it or deploy these funds into either one, building a software, two, creating new businesses, or hiring more staff. To so make my you business can grow. Correct. Makes sense. That's my interpretation. I'm not sure what his is, but that's how I would interpret it. So you said that when your accounts get, when there's too much money in your account, you, you get scared. Yeah. Because the banks are going to have a field day making a lot of money off of me. Yeah. I refuse. Unless they're bringing in me on that 12% yeah. and that 15% that they're charging people, you're not getting access to my funds, bro. You're not. I'm going to use my funds to create more cash flow for me. That makes sense. A lot of people think that, uh, so what, are, what is your thoughts on saving? Saving, if you save, you're a loser. <laughs> you're, print, you're, you're saving something that they are printing trillions of. It don't make no sense. Use it to buy assets. Use it to possess cash flowing things. Use it to increase your net worth. Saving? They print the shit by the millions per day. What are you saving? Paper? <laughs> There's nothing wrong with stacking. Yeah. You can stack your bread up if you got a plan for it. But don't just save to save when inflation's going up and it's losing its value. Every day your don't money's no in the sense. bank, it loses value. Don't make no sense. Uh, there's a, there's a, a popular... Uh, Personality, I call him. His name is Man Man Kevin, mm -hmm. and uh, he makes millions of dollars selling credit cleaning letters on OnlyFans. Mm -hmm. What are your thoughts on that? It's a good service. If you can solve people's problems, solve it. I make hundreds of thousand dollars a month um, using mines. So no, no issue. So it's, it's actually well, no. It, it's you're helping people on a wider scale, right? It's just like Amazon. So. Well, Amazon sell millions and millions of people shit on Amazon every day to solve their problems. Hmm. Okay, 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 okay. Now, you're going on an exquisite podcast run. I've seen you on every dope show there is, and I appreciate you coming to us. You know what I'm I saying? I appreciate you. Uh, what, what doors has telling the world about your services open for you? So I'm what is called a disruptive thinker, mm -hmm. right? And being a disruptive thinker, it comes two sides. Some people won't like you. They say you're a fraud. And people, you take them out the matrix. Some people can't handle the truth. It is cool. Many were called and few are chosen. So there's people, one, that wants to prove and see if I'm a fraud, Am I? Do I have a script somewhere yeah. that I'm telling you all these codes from? Dude, you're right here. Tell me what script or phone did I pull out giving you any of these laws or reading the laws. Wow. Right? Do it in your head. So people, people, like, it's so crazy that our own people will try every single thing to pull you down versus having a conversation to see how we can impact and help more people. Crab in a barrel. Hmm. 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 So it has opened up a lot of doors because now a lot of people, they're looking up the things that I'm saying and they're seeing that the stuff is true. It's right there. It's yeah, right, it's it's right. It's, 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 I just seen it, y'all. It's right there. Hey, he ain't capping. There ain't no capping going on. Yeah, I'm going to tell you the real. Hey, hey, it's right there. But because people refuse to read, they rather it's so easy for someone to blame you. Yeah than to take responsibility for their own shortcomings. Hmm. Yeah, in fact, it, I like it's that. It's so easy. So let me go blame you because it's so much easier. Yeah. Hey, man, it's right in the right, man. You can go look it up yourself. You can run the tape back. Go watch this interview. 
Here you go, USC 1861. <laughs> hey, man, let's talk Tony the Closer. Is, is he an op or is he an ally? And uh, What do you mean? Tony the Closer. Is, would you consider him an ally or would you consider him opposition? And the reason I ask this is because mm -hmm. he calls people who take 10% mm -hmm. of funding scammers. Well, that's his opinion. That doesn't make... What he's saying right, it doesn't make what he's saying wrong. Okay. That's his opinion. Right? So if he thinks that 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 is that is wrong, well, he I guess he has a reason why he's saying it. But don't knock another man's hustle. You never you, know what I'm you saying? never knock nobody's hustle. Right? No, there's some people that's not doing the right thing. Mm. We do have those people in the bunch. So I've never really had any issues with Tony the Closer. Um Dude voices his opinion. Well, it's his opinion. It doesn't make it right. It doesn't make it wrong. It's his opinion. He built his platform. It's America. You got freedom of speech. Do what you do, brother. Yeah, do you, bro. I ain't you, got no you, 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 uh, you know JT, right? Who is that? JT? Who, who from the that? City Girls? Oh. JT from the City Girls? Oh, who are we is talking to? City we, Girls or... You said what? The Pocket Watch, yeah. Yeah, I've heard of him. I've seen this channel. Yeah, yeah. Like, mm -hmm. um, um, how afraid are you of pocket watching with JT? <laughs> <laughs> uh, <laughs> gotcha. <laughs> did, you, did you just ask? Oh, <laughs> afraid of what? Ah, there you go. Okay, okay. Af oh, my. I think you need to rephrase that fucking question. Yeah, baby. So let's take it back one let's time. Let's take it back, baby. I don't think that question... Dramatically made sense. But well, go ahead. How afraid are you? Uh, uh, how afraid are you of pocket watching with JT? Why the fuck would I be afraid of pocket watching with JT? <laughs> and that's like, the answer. Yeah, 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 yeah. What does he do? <laughs> Tell me who does he help? Tell oh. me what conference does he put on? Mm. Tell me if he's helping millions of people. Mm. Dude can't even make his own fucking content. <laughs> Bruh. <laughs> Talk that talk. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I like it when he talk that talk. I'm just, I'm just saying, right? I'm just saying. If we can't come together as a people, if you have an issue with what somebody's saying, all right, let's go on a pod. Mm. Bro, what did you mean when you say this? But if you're going to hide behind a computer with your Twitter fingers yeah. and try to drag somebody through the mud mm. so you can get likes and a fucking YouTube plaque... Bro, get out of my face, bro. Yeah, man, you know what I'm saying? That, that, that ugly movie. Yeah, I don't give a fuck about no JT and no pocket watch. <laughs> I love it. I love it. Hey, man, I got him in here, tell ladies him and to, gentlemen. Tell him to put on a conference. Hmm. Let's see who's going to go. Because mm. I know I'm putting on one of the biggest credit conferences in the nation. Helping millions of people. So you think I'm worried about somebody that don't even make a hundred grand a month? <laughs> talk that talk. Because you got a YouTube plaque? Because talk that talk. you can talk behind a computer? Come I on, love, bro. I love it. I'm sorry. I'll, I play. Wanna, I'll be a devil's advocate. Show me the receipt. <laughs> show me the receipt. This episode is being brought to you by Engorge Rejuvenation Tea, promoting erections, improving stamina, increasing size. So if you get you one, the right kind of one, and you really want to put it down, go to engorge.com and get yours today. All natural male supplement and official sponsor of the Ugly Money Podcast. I like that. How, how many people are you helping? How many lives have you changed? It's always easy for somebody. How many to, people yeah. called you and say, yo, I just got approved for this apartment because of your information. Wow. I just stopped my mom from going into bankruptcy and foreclosure because of your information. I just cleaned my wife's credit report. Now we are moving into our new home because of your information. So, dude, if you ain't changing lives, please exit the building. Ladies you are gentlemen. not worth my time. Yeah, we are here, yeah, baby. I love it, brother. I love it, brother. I love it. All right, let's 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 talk some uh, uh, on some brighter, greener pastures. Say I want to start an LLC. Mm -hmm. What codes? Like I want to start a business. Uh, I don't know what I'm doing. What what category? What codes do I need to, uh, you know, start this LLC with? Or what you recommend? And as far as like you know, getting loans and stuff from my bankers. 
So before you start any business, I'm going to tell you, I'm not a CPA. Mm -hmm. I'm not an attorney. I got a high school diploma. <laughs> what you need to do is go buy two books. Start Your Own Corporation, mm. Run Your Own Corporation by Garrett Sutton. Those two books will get you in the mind frame uh, and the mindset to go set your LLCs up. He has all the information in there. Those are the books that I studied. Respect. And this Respect. is why I have all my LLCs out of Wyoming, because of what I know that is what the state of Wyoming does and the state of Nevada does. You know what I, you know what I respect about you, brother, is the fact that you, you're transparent to the fact of, hey, if I don't know the answer, I will tell you where to go get the information yeah. from. Well, where a lot of people are just trying to cap and flex like they know everything. For what? I'm not here to impress anybody, bro. <laughs> respect, I'm not. Bro. Respect, no man. No pocket watch or no motherfucking body. <laughs> yo, pocket watch. Pocket watch, yo, yo, hey. I'm sorry, I missed again. I missed again. I'm sorry. I'm going to leave it alone. I'm going to leave it alone. Some <laughs> people are so bad at making content that, that, that they rather go get your videos, yeah. put some fucking emojis on it, and think that, oh, I'm making content. No, go do some research. Go Dang. save some people. Go change some lives. <laughs> I love it, my brother. Yeah, 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 yeah. We are here, ladies and gentlemen. We are here. Uh, tons of gems, tons of game. I really should have put this interview behind a paywall because uh, <laughs> it's going to be a lot of people. <laughs> he said his his free content was uh, was better than my he paid. paid <laughs> like, my free content on my free YouTube channel is better than people's paid content. We didn't Let's it today. see what type of free content anybody in social media is putting out or any pocket watchers. Let's see. <laughs> 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 you got a million dollars in the bank? Like, you know what? Let me go. Big bank, take little bank, man. Goddamn luck. Let me go. Let, <laughs> we gonna, we gonna let him stay in the dark. So uh, let's move forward. Let's talk about data sequencing. Who? Data sequencing. Okay. Um, and as far as data sequencing, like uh, the difference between that and um, something as as a situation like uh, data. Excuse me, data points. Data and sequence, yeah, data points and sequencing. Mm -hmm. Like, what are the difference between the two? So, data points are what is needed for you to get qualified or approved for a certain line of credit, mm -hmm. like a hundred percent payment history, known derogatories, um, seven to nine accounts, um, five to ten accounts, uh, three inquiries or less. Just, just those data points okay. make a healthy consumer report. Three years or more age on a credit profile. Um, sequencing is knowing what banks pull from where. Mm. And you might be in an incognito window where if you know that a, um, this company pulls from Experian, this pulls from TransUnion, this pulls from Equifax, you have three tabs open. And then at the same time, you hit send, send, send on all three applications. You just got approved for like 20 grand each. So you got 60,000 off of one inquiry. That's like a sequence. That's all right there. <laughs> We need to know that. We need we, we need to know that. Now, medical bills are a thing in the black community. Now, as far as deans, I wonder why. Interesting that the community that has the most medical bills mm -hmm. also have the most fast food restaurants. Wow, ain't that a coincidence? But what do I know? Right? Hey, hey, hey. I, I'm only here. I'm a, I'm a scam, right? I don't know nothing I'm talking about. <laughs> you know, so the medical bills being uh, so big in the black community, uh, and as far as, you know, dings on one's credit is concerned, a lot of times when you go to the ER, they just end up telling you to take a Tylenol <laughs> and drink water. But they bill you $1,200. Now, when you go to the ER, they ask you for your info, but people can lie and evade payment so it doesn't hit their credit. What's your take on it? I mean, people will do what people will do regardless, but what you should know is that if there's a medical bill on your consumer report, $500 or below, it's not supposed to be on there. There's laws in place that that doesn't show up. Hmm. And if we're talking about medical collections now over 500, then there are also laws you can use. It's just knowing what strategy you're gonna use to delete what. Okay, that's all. Right. I'm learning, man. I'm just, look, I, I got you here. 
I'm just going to ask you all the <laughs> questions that I'll be trying to figure out so I can get my life in order. You know what I'm saying? Do, do you, um, let's talk social media. Like, uh, is social media subscribers and engagement, is that the new, is that the next credit score? Um, there will, I believe there will be a social score. I think it's here already. Wow. We just don't know about it. Um, the absence of evidence is not the evidence of absence. Hmm. And what that means is not because we don't see or know that something exists, it doesn't mean that it doesn't. Right, so I do believe there's a social score, and I believe the major social platforms like Facebook, Instagram, Twitter. I be, well, I wouldn't say Twitter because Elon Elon isn't in the matrix. Elon is out of it. Elon is the one of them. But the powers to be that control the social networks, there is a credit. I can't prove it. Mm-hmm. I, I can't prove it. But I do believe there's a social rating that categorizes people. And the same way you are banned. Have you ever been been in Facebook jail or banned? Yeah. You have to send in a picture. Yeah. It's a mugshot. Exactly. It's a mugshot, right? Yeah. It's a mugshot. You have a series of numbers down mm. here. What does those numbers mean? It's a mugshot. Mm. So it, it, it's here, not because they don't tell us that it's not here. Like we, At what point do we become cognizant to think that everything that's going to happen, the government is going to tell us? They're not. They fucking knew COVID was happening. They knew it before. They knew it was man-made. Fauci and all of them fuckers lied mm. on TV talking about getting COVID shots. Right? Oh, it's going to save you. It's going to save your family. Well, we did say it's going to save you, but what it actually does is it will help protect you. So how does it go from saving us to now maybe protecting us? And now I need a booster. <laughs> And you still so, get and you still get COVID. And you still get it. <laughs> it's and a you new strand. It. It's a new strand. You gotta take the shot again. Let's um, you know, it, it, it's interesting because I mean, in just this interview alone, you've you've taught us how to finance our dream. Well, first you first the first thing you did was taught us to change our how 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 our thinking Very important. can can impact our dreams coming true. Mm-hmm. And then when we you know, when we change our minds then you taught us how to finance the dream Mm -hmm. you know what i'm saying through credit credit repairs loans things of that nature so i you know me being a music guy i look at like record labels Mm -hmm. who basically are just institutions that give artists loans Mm -hmm. and a marketing plan well if an artist can handle their marketing and think that's dumb all right you create an LLC in your name, whether your name is John Doe.com, right? So John Doe LLC or John Q Doe, whatever. The LLC is in your name. Your LLC now gets contracted with the music record company. Mm. So you, the natural person, are an employee of the LLC, and the LLC is in business with the record label. Exactly. Right? Business goes bankrupt all the time. Hmm. So if you're in contracts that you don't want to be in contracts, well, have the entity hold the contract. So you are not liable. You are just a manager of the LLC. (laughs) Now we're talking about funding the LLC. Um, Leverage personal credit. Go run a sequence. Go get $100,000, $200,000, $300,000 worth of credit. Dude, one of my friends, Credit Plug, have almost $6 million in lines of credit, bro. Wow. Right? You don't need record labels. What they need to learn is financial literacy. Because now, if we're talking about our label is going to give you two, three hundred thousand, dude, you can go get that and three credit cards. Wow. Like, okay. Now you're talking like, my language. You can go get it on I three credit it. cards, bro. Okay, so say let's say my credit score 700. Mm-hmm. It just hit 700, right? How can I? How easy is it for me to go get $100,000? Well, it depends on you. One, you can go try it yourself. You could succeed. You could fail. Or you could get a coach or somebody that does funding that knows what they're doing. Yes, you're going to pay maybe 10 to 15%. It's their business. Yeah. It's their business model. They're working. Mm. They're the ones filling out the application. Exactly. Right? So give unto Caesar what is Caesar. Right. The same way, if you have a, a real estate contract 
and you're flipping the contract and you're wholesaling it. The same way you want your bread. You went and found the house, right? Right. You found the seller. You found the buyer. You ha you put your fee in the middle. Yes, sir. It's business, right? So mm -hmm. there is no robbery and fair exchange. It's fair. It's a fair exchange. If I'm gonna get you two, three hundred thousand that you didn't have access to, exactly. Why wouldn't I not charge my fee? Yeah, I ain't tripping. I'm letting you know what my fee is. No, you have the choice. The informed decision of saying you want it or not. You give me three hundred thousand. You 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 ask it for thirty. I ain't tripping. That's my fee. I ain't trip. Go get it. You get fifty, dog. You so, get fifty, man. He for tripping. Like I said, though, to each yeah. his own. You know yeah. what I'm yeah. saying? Yeah. I'm not here to have conversation with people or start industry beef. I honestly don't give a fuck about nobody. The only people I care about are the people that I help, the people that come to me that wants my help, the people that I was called to serve. Everybody else, they're, they're irrelevant. What, what element of you as a person do you feel that may be misunderstood, if anything? I speak what is on my mind, and I'm a direct person. A lot of people don't know how to handle the truth. Mm. They want the truth, but they don't know how to handle the truth. Now, this is the Ugly Money Podcast. We, suit, we salute the process of success. Your ups, your downs, your highs, your lows, you know what I'm saying? Everything between your first dollar and your first million, that's what we mm. call ugly money. You know, it's the process of success. Name me a time in your life that you fell down and you had to get back up, and how'd you do it? Dude, I fell down many times. Those are called lessons. Yes, sir. Right? Um, first year of doing business, I didn't take a paycheck. I paid my team, and I refused to take a paycheck. And then after, when I reinvested the money back in the business, I expanded the team, there's many times my account went down to the last 1000 or $2,000, barely made payroll, and there wasn't even enough for me to take a paycheck. So I told my, 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 um, my finance, my CFO, don't give me a paycheck. It's cool. I'll figure it out. There's enough for me to pay rent and stuff, but it wasn't enough for me to get a paycheck. Yes. I said, make sure the team is paid. I am the last person that gets paid in my company. Everybody needs to get paid first. And if there's not enough, I'm good. I'm okay. I'll survive until next month. So my job as a CEO is to go back in the lab and figure out yes, how I'm going to generate another hundred or two hundred thousand yes, this yes, month. Yes, sir. Amen. Like, <laughs> man, you, <laughs> you're speaking to me, brother. You have no idea. <laughs> you're That's speaking what real me. CEOs No, are. for sure. For sure. Sometimes, you know, the, yeah, everybody wants to be the boss, man, and the owner or the CEO, but yeah, you they, don't, they're, you not just, they're not ready. They don't understand what, what, what comes with what it. Comes, they don't, they're not ready for that. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, you get, paid, you get paid with whether or not I make a dime or not. <laughs> the first and the 15th. Yeah, yeah. The first and the 15th. Yeah. Regardless if we make money or not, yeah. you are expecting a paycheck. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, you know, and, and the thing is, it's like, uh, it's funny how uh, folks will, or pocket, like, say, for instance, you, you've taken a loss for six months, and then you finally have one decent month. And that one decent month does not cover the six months of losses that you've taken. Mm -mm -mm -mm. But you know what? This month we're in the green a couple of thousands of dollars. And then they want a tip. <laughs> They're like, we did good this month. I want a tip. And I'm like, bro, we just lost money the past <laughs> six months. Think you might get the fuck out of my face. <laughs> What up? So you have a brand, you have a business, and you want to get the word out. In the last 90 days, we did over 30 million views on YouTube, over 50 million views on social media sites. Promote your business on the Ugly Money Podcast. Let me help you turn your business up. Make sure you text the number right here below. We'll schedule a call, and let's get it popping. Let's get it, let's get it moving. Let's get that brand and that business out of here. Yeah, you can be an official sponsor of the Ugly Money Podcast, and China just left. See y'all in a minute. Text us. There, it, it's a lot, man. Yeah. Many were calling, few are chosen. And heavy is the head that wears the crown. Yes, you sir. Know, it, it's, it's not for everyone. Hey, man, brother, I really appreciate you making some time to come out here, man. It was very informative. Uh, I learned a ton of things, and uh, I, I definitely myself personally want to tap in and uh, see what kind of uh, <laughs> things are, uh, are above the horizon for me. <laughs> uh, if someone wants to learn more, if someone wants to tap in, if someone wants to work with uh, with you, 
please tell us every avenue that we can to access you. Absolutely. So the first thing, uh, depending on when this episode airs, um, the credit summit is next weekend, yes, sir. Um, September 29th, 30th, and October 1st. Y'all need to be there. If you want to learn how to repair, rebuild, restore your own credit, learn how to scale your credit repair business, learn how to start your own credit repair business. And, excuse me. If you are tired of being in a zip code where you are being taken advantage of, there's fast food restaurants everywhere. There's a payday loan, a check cash in place, a pawn shop. These plagues that are in our neighborhoods. Wow. If you are sick and tired of living an expensive life because you have bad credit, this is for you. You can bring your kids, your mom. It's a family event. We need to normalize. Let me see y'all drop the word normalize in the chat. We need to normalize financial conversations, credit conversations in the home so we can change the dynamics of the next generation. On Instagram, I'm Doreen DeLevante, D-A-R-A-I-N-E, D-E-L-E-V-A-N-T-E. YouTube, the same, Doreen DeLevante. Twitter, Twitch, everywhere. Just type in Doreen DeLevante. Follow me on our social medias. And also, the link will, will be in the description. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Hey, man, you can follow me at Ugly Money Nietzsche. That's Ugly Money N-I-C-H-E. This episode being brought to you by Chosen Vodka. Triple Distilled goes down extremely smooth. Vodka made by a black man for the chosen few. Remember, the bigger the dream, the bigger the risk, the bigger the payoff. This has been the Ugly Money Podcast with Durain Delavante. Brother, that